In the previous video, I introduced you to the idea of impulse. Here's the idea. Let's say that we have a mass which is moving along with a velocity v initial. Then a force F begins to act on the mass, and the force continues acting on the mass for a time delta t. After the force has acted on the mass for a time delta t, the mass will then have a new velocity. Let's call that new velocity v final. With this scenario in mind, we define the impulse that acted on the mass to be the product of the force that acted on the mass multiplied by the time interval for which the force acted. We saw in the previous video that the impulse which acts on the, the mass turns out to be the mass multiplied by the change in the velocity of the mass. If we like, we can also say that the impulse delivered to the mass is equal to the mass times the difference between the final velocity vector and the initial velocity vector. Starting from this result, we're now going to do an example problem. In this example problem, I have a mass which is initially sitting here motionless, and then a 3,000 Newton force acting to the right is going to come in and act on that mass for 0.002 seconds. We say that the mass is equal to 4.5 kilograms. We want to find the impulse delivered to the mass by the force and also the final velocity after the force is done acting on the mass. If you look at this figure here, you can see that I have force, which is a vector quantity, and also velocity, which is a vector quantity. However, I have not put those little arrow symbols on top of the force vector or the velocity vector. The reason for this is that in this problem, everything's going to happen along a single coordinate direction. So I'm just going to put in an x-axis for that coordinate direction. And because everything is happening now along the x-axis, we can just think of the force as a signed scalar, either positive or negative, and then that positive or negative keeps track of the direction for us. So let's go ahead and do the calculation now. So first we need to find the impulse. So coming over here, we have the definition of impulse. Impulse equals force times time interval. Notice that I have dropped the little arrow symbols over the impulse and the force. The reason for that is that everything is happening along a single coordinate axis. So we can just use the signs of these quantities, positive or negative, to keep track of the direction. So let's go ahead now and make the numerical substitution. The force is equal to 3,000 newtons. And I'm taking that to be plus 3,000 newtons because the force is acting in the plus x direction. I then multiply that by the time interval for which the force acts, 0 0.002 seconds. And multiplying those together, I get 6.0, and then the unit is newton seconds, and we just leave that as newton seconds. In part B of the problem, we want to find the final velocity of the mass after the force has acted. So let's sketch this out, and we're going to end up with a sketch which looks a whole lot like the one over here. So we have our mass starting out with an initial velocity of zero. Then we have our force coming in to act on the mass. Then after the force has acted, the mass has a final velocity. And we say, again, that the force acted for a time delta t. So now let's copy over our result from the previous video. We have impulse equals mass times change in velocity. But here we are dropping the vector symbols. So it'll just be j equals m times delta v. And we will say then that the change in the velocity is final velocity.
minus initial velocity. The initial velocity is zero. So now let's solve for the final velocity. Now let's solve for the final velocity. We have final velocity equals impulse over mass. We have already calculated that the impulse is 6.0 Newton seconds. The mass was given as 4.50 kilograms. The numerical value here is 1.33, but we want to check that the unit actually comes out to be meters per second. So let's expand Newton. A Newton is kilogram times meter per second squared. All of that is multiplied by seconds. We divide by kilograms. So we have kilograms canceling kilograms. We have seconds over seconds squared. So we have one factor of seconds left in the denominator. So you can see that what remains is meters per second. And we have our final velocity is 1.33 meters per second. So now we have done a single straightforward calculation involving an impulse applied to a single mass. In the next video, we're going to apply the idea of impulse in a situation where two masses collide with each other.